Consciousness in its expression as human being lives a very narrow life, very small life actually, very private. It's part of the 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 coziness that the mind dwells inside this sometimes a very small world. But I want to encourage us to be in the universal being. Somehow something wants to shrink into being personal, a personal being, small, you know your world, you fit into your context very well, but you're a universal being at the same time. And even if you live in a place like in a little tiny village, it doesn't stop you from being universal inside yourself. This is something I felt uh, this morning very, very much want to share this way. That just to announce that again inside the consciousness that as consciousness we are universal, we're not personal. And when we now I am saying it deliberately inside as an invitation to to welcome uh, not even to welcome, but to come into the, your universality. Because if I say you welcome your universality, it's almost like sometimes you're welcoming from the place of still being personal. It's a very subtle thing. Mm -hmm. Because after a while, it feels completely natural and easy and effortless just to be a person. I say, okay, don't try to stop being a person. Just be in your universality. Because. Uh, To live a life that most people call life or existence can be a very narrow thing, a very private affair. But to be in your universality is to be conversant with all things. Not necessarily that you are conversing with all things. But your beingness is large enough, it, it, everything fits inside your beingness. I don't know if you really follow what I'm really pointing to, because it can be an instant of recognition, an instant, an instant, an instant, an instant of reminding and recognition to, to stay in your openness, and it will feel like an effort in the beginning. Because something just kind of like just drops back into the into the personal setting, and of course that can continue. Don't fight with that. But try and understand what it what it what it what it means to say to be in your universality. And the only way that we can experience this successfully, in a sense, is to be aware of the I in its normal uh, expression and context and be aware that that is being also observed. The very fact of it is the observing of the I-me places the sense of self in a larger space of being. It's almost like you have to be empty. You come back to just being empty. When you're empty, you have no size. When you're a person, you definitely have a size. And uh, we feel almost a kind of security in your size. But universality is more to do with consciousness. The body is not, it has a size. The mind and our present level of um, knowledge or so on, that has a kind of proportion in a sense. Mm -hmm. But the pure being is not, no proportion. And that is the only constant, amazingly. Not just talking about the dynamic consciousness, the dualistic function of consciousness, but as pure being. That's the only aspect, that's the only part. If you want to say, I'm using words like part, aspect is not this, but because language is itself so limited, we are touching words that brings a kind of limitation. But that dimension of oneself, which is entirely the only place where you are effortless. 
And yet, because we we come into the sense of effortfulness of being a person into a kind of construction, <coughs> it seems that we have to make an effort to be the effortlessness which we naturally are. So you see how the mistake is kept up, because constantly our self-referencing goes back to something personal. We always go back to measurements. You know, well, this is just how I am, and measure ourselves by our temperament and habits, and conditioning. Whereas all these are phenomenal to the one who sees. So this call to universality, I don't know where this will reach inside yourself and and how it will manifest. But it is in it is in somehow communicating these truths that the consciousness shakes off the littleness of being and finds the the infinite space in which all things have a place in the in the in the totality all things have a place in the person not definitely some things are required some things are not required this is the always we are like traffic policemen in your own mind because you have to protect your identity and the idea of self. This is not so for the one who sees. For one who sees nothing will to protect because that which is cannot be harmed. It's like while we have a sense of being and having an existence in a body, you know, it's that the consciousness seems to want to perpetuate that at any cost. To the point where if we had the choice to just live forever in this body, we would choose yes, 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 without we think that's just such a big uh, gift, but really, it's not the life in the body, in any particular body, that is so precious. It is the consciousness. Everything points to, uh, if there is going to be really a, uh, an evolution in, in in the conscious being, everything points to coming back to emptiness. It's the only only place where there is space. Everything is claustrophobic. As a person, we are claustrophobic. So many concerns, so many things have to be kept up. So many, so much self-consciousness, so much you know, looking after this body and all of this. So the crisp thing I want to say is, be in your universality. Sometimes just the saying of these things. Just the very saying of them and the hearing of them, you see, shows us how we are not in our universality. Where the conscious, where consciousness points attention, is always into kind of like the personal projections. Don't waste time with that for a moment. Just somehow contemplate a little bit what it means to say, be in your universality. Is there something you have to do? Is it something you have to do? Or is it not just a kind of recognition that is pointing somehow to what already is, but then something feels, but how can I stay like this? This is the, this is the voice of the human, you see? How can I stay like this? And I want us to really understand what the content of this, this desire or prayer in the human mind is. First, is the one who says this, is this what you are? Because if you identify with this, this is where the energy will start from. Does, do we see this or not? If you say, yeah, how can I stay here? then that's where any efforts are going to be made by the one who cannot stay, cannot be consistent enough to see through its projections. We have to examine this, this, uh, this posture you know, of identity. If we say you are the Self, you are that, something inside says, yes, yes, I know that I am that. But even in that moment, there's a betrayal or something. 
it is as though we are agreeing from the position of the person that we are the presence mm. but it's not it, it not just is it's like it is something like I agree I see I understand this but it's not your living truth like not yet or something and as long is not about if, uh, if you try harder and you practice more techniques it's really like I say it's a twist of consciousness that removes the feeling of the the belief in the one who does things of course it is helpful for a while if consciousness chooses to express as a journeyer in truth it's simply becoming more and more re re refined in in its in its in the mind realm but it can go through so many variations and subtleties that so much time can pass doing that sometimes you think you zoom in on something you go very very deeply into the essence of something and it turns out it's just into into mind you think you're going deeply into the self and stuff but it's just going more and more in your mind and the moment you see this just something just just drops off from this the one that is journeying, feeling I'm journeying, I'm getting closer, I've got, I've got to get it, I've got to maybe sit more, and I, I, I. It's also the self, but it's the self in a state of hypnosis, sleepwalking, sleep talking, sleep living. The ambition, the destination, the goal of that seeker. Is also the self that we are, and just that little unclarity keeps billions immersed in samsara, because <laughs> the identity seems so persistent, so continuous almost. So I don't know if you want to call it grace. Don't see grace as something else coming in to act upon you. Grace arises within your own self. Arises as openness, as understanding, that is. Gradually this the personal what I would call hmm, self infatuation burns off. And only the space of being should remain. If you want to know what the goal of truth, you read books, you people love Rumi and they love Papaji, they love Ramana Maharshi, they love you know Krishna and stuff. And yet the same point, they're pointing only to this. You can love Krishna, but at the end, you know, something's afraid of the inquiry. It's afraid, mistrust and stuff. These two forces are working there. They are, they have only discovered this and have merged in this. They have no past that is more powerful than the presence that they are. The history of Krishna is meaningless to Krishna. So I'm just putting it out today to try and move in that 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 space to be aware to stay in that awareness. I don't want to tell you how that's too small. I don't want to tell you how. It's enough just to say, be yourself. Be your, you are the universal self. You are the universe. There's no how to do that. If I tell you how, you fall into a trap again. Just you are, we are this. Something inside is completely at peace with that. But it needs sometimes a kind of acknowledgement. And maybe I can call self-respect. Maybe I can use this term. But we can say, no, this thing, we just go right back to the dribble. But really to sit and, and, and feel that. The mind wants to piece of the action. It wants to do something. It wants to say, yes, yes, you know. When I do this and I do that, then I see this. No, 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 it's, it's, already, it's already done.
So I don't want to say anything more about that. Mm. As we move about, as you move about what you're doing or not doing, whatever. Because, you know, it will come a moment, a time, maybe today, maybe this morning, maybe another time, maybe another week, another month, I don't know. When you're just going to see things as they are, that you will see it from a place of emptiness, that you'll be entirely empty. But you fully are. And that's not a belief. Mm -hmm. That where the ego is a belief. <laughs> that where the ego and the person, that is a belief, a very entrenched belief, and so entrenched that really it goes unquestioned. And then everything is going from the position of that, of that identity. But if anything is going to be true for you, that has to get swallowed up. That you don't need uh, the reference you, you, your mind imagines. Your life can be fully here. You will see things with the senses like everyone sees them. But they won't have that, um, that command that they do. They're not meant to command. They are our agents, our antennas uh, to the perceiving the world. We're not meant to be ruled by these forces, you know. Only we have to become a person for that. First become person, then you become donkey. <laughs> <laughs> to your own thinking, our own thinking become like this. Every time there's an engagement on a personal level, it feels like a very big ouch. And something just wants to... If we are aware of the self, then you may enjoy the person. Mm -hmm. Because it, it has no threat. Is that playing with a snake has no teeth? It's okay, it's fine. Can't do anything to you. You can give it to your children, they play with it. You see? But if you start if you believe in this, you know, you're carrying person, then person is gonna give it too much for you. Mm -hmm. After a while it's like, oh it's enough, oh I gotta go. Finish. You see. So the person's sense can just be playful, it's just light for a moment and it's it's, it's nothing. It's, it doesn't leave a bad smell. It's only when the person, the sort of person believes in the person, mm -hmm. carries the weight of a person. As I said before, the ego is the heaviest thing in the world. It's heavier than all the mountains put together. Because when he sits on the being, the being can't move. That's how heavy. Mm -hmm. The being is that in which, which is the womb of the whole universe. But if the ego sits on him, he can't move. Mm. That's why I said that the ego is the heaviest thing in the world. Mm. You see? Sits on him means somehow to blind him. You forget yourself. That's a very heavy thing. Mm. 